Hi, my name is Brendan, and I'm from Arcturus's customer success team. I'm here to walk you through the workflow for creating an OMS. OMS stands for Open Mesh Sequence. It's our high compression volumetric video format. OMS files allow you to compress a series of mesh frames into a single file, making it easy to manage and utilize volumetric videos in your projects. OMS files have a very high size to quality ratio and are our general purpose volumetric files. To accompany the OMS file, we will also be creating an MP4 file to store our textures. To create the OMS file, we will need to clean the meshes to remove problematic data and optimize mesh density, stabilize the frames to split them into a series of topologically consistent sets, and compress these sets by storing a keyframe mesh for each set and the deformations required to match the rest of the frames in the set. Let's get started by creating a hollow edit workspace. First, locate a drive on your computer with plenty of space and create a new folder. Because Hollow Edit is non-destructive, workspace can get quite large, especially if you have multiple compositions within that workspace. Once you've created this folder, name it for your project. In this case, I'll call it OMS Creation Workflow. Now let's move our mesh and texture data into this folder. I'll be using a series of OBJ files for meshes and PNG files for textures. While you can put both the mesh and texture files in the same folder, I would suggest placing them in their own folders so that they can easily be replaced if needed. Now we can open Hollow Edit and create the workspace. Click the Open a Workspace button and select the workspace folder you created earlier. This will generate the project files to that folder. We can now see our two folders of source data in the project panel. Click on the Make Clip buttons to import the folders and turn them into clips that can be loaded into the composition. For the texture files, we don't need to check any particular settings. For the mesh files, we have a number of import options that may be beneficial for your input data. The main setting I'll draw your attention to is the Detect Stabilize option. This will check your mesh data and see if it's already stabilized. This would be a good point to talk about stabilization. Stabilization is when a range of frames share the same mesh topology. There are different names for this. For example, in capture technologies like Microsoft Reality Capture, this is called a tracked mesh. Because they share the same topology, we can deform one mesh to match the others in the range, preventing us from needing to store each frame. If you're unsure if your data is pre-stabilized, there is no harm in checking this option. If the data is stabilized, you'll see the stabilized segments when it's added to your composition. If it's not, you'll see a series of single frame segments. In order to show the full workflow, I'm going to treat this data as unstabilized data. However, if you have stabilized data, you can skip over the stabilization section of this video. Once they are finished importing, you can drag the mesh and texture clips into the composition. In Hollow Edit, using a processing preset is the quickest way to make sure you have all of the stages required to process your source data correctly. We are looking to compress and export an OMS file, so select the OMS compression preset. This will load in all of the stages required to fully process your data to be exported as an OMS file. The stages in Hollow Edit process from the top to the bottom. The first stage in our process stack is clean. The clean stage has two uses. One is removing imperfections from the mesh, such as degenerate triangles, bits of disconnected mesh, holes, and faces with two or less connected faces. The other use is for decimating the mesh to reduce its vert count. Both of these are good to run before stabilizing, as it will ensure good deformation and reduce compute time. It is worth noting that it can be run on pre-stabilized data or after the stabilization stage as well without destroying the stabilization. In this case, I will be leaving the default settings with the exception of enabling decimation. When it comes to good vert count, it really depends on where the clip will be used. The lower your vert count, the smaller the output file will be, and the less compute time will be used by the following mesh processing stages. This is at the trade-off of quality. However, most meshes can be decimated as low as 20,000 or even 10,000 verts before serious quality degradation starts. For this case, I will be decimating to 30,000 verts, as this is a good middle-of-the-road mesh density. By selecting my mesh load asset stage, I can see the source vert count is roughly 60,000. So I'm reducing my mesh density by about half. Note that you can also decimate the face as well as different parts of the body separately to maintain detail in those areas, but that will not be covered in this tutorial. 
The stabilized mesh stage is what's going to enable our compression. If your data is pre-stabilized, you can go ahead and skip to the compress mesh segments section of this tutorial. In the stabilized mesh stage, each range of frames will go through the following process to create deformations that match the keyframe mesh, also known as the source mesh, to the rest of the frames in the range, also called target meshes. First, the data is split into segments. This length is dictated by the max work unit length setting. Second, an ideal keyframe is selected from within the segment. Next, the algorithm will attempt to match vertices from the keyframe mesh to the corresponding vertices in the target meshes in the segment. This step works from the keyframe towards each inch of the segment, attempting to match each target frame as it goes. Lastly, this keyframe tries to deform its vertices to match the vertices it was able to find. If, during this process, the error in deformations exceeds the segment max error setting, this segment will break at that frame into two segments, and the process will start again on the new unstabilized segment. The settings for stabilized mesh can be quite dense, and going over them in detail is not in the scope of this tutorial. Please take a look at our advanced compression tutorial for more information on setting these stabilization settings. After stabilization, the target meshes of each segment will have had their topology replaced to match the mesh topology of the keyframe meshes for that segment. The keyframes are indicated by the diamonds on the timeline. Because the mesh frames have a new topology, the UV mappings for those frames no longer match the textures. Due to this, we need to transfer over the textures to the new UVs. This is the purpose of the texture transfer stage. To configure this stage, you simply need to assign the stage you want to transfer the textures from. Because this stage needs to access both the UV stored on the mesh and the textures, you will need to select the bottom of your two load asset stages. Because data waterfalls down in hollow edit, this lower stage will also have access to the data of the stage above it. Compression mesh segments is the final stage in the OMS creation workflow. This stage takes the results of the stabilization and encodes them into a format that can be exported in an OMS file. The settings for the stage can be left on default. We now have all the stages configured. This is a good point to save your composition. Click File, Save, name your file, and click Save. If this is the first time you have processed this particular data source, it is recommended to process a small slice of your data to verify your settings are good before submitting the whole clip to be processed. Because we have our maximum work unit length set to 25, a good rule of thumb is to run the first 25 frames. This ensures that we get as much stabilization as possible and do not need to rerun this interval if the results are good. Before we create our work interval, click the S slash F to the right of the timecode readout in the composition panel to switch to frames. Now drag the playback head to the 24th frame so we know where to cut. Switch to the razor tool, hold the shift key, and click just after frame 24 to create an interval that spans the first 25 frames. While you can execute the stages one at a time, it requires hollow edit to upload and download the data between stages. If you execute your whole stack at once, the completed data from one stage can be fed to the next in the cloud, decreasing the time it takes to process. Select the arrow cursor and drag select the dark gray unprocessed stages for the stack, right click and select execute. You can now click on the task view button in the bottom right hand corner to see the progress of the data preparation and uploading. As the files are uploaded, they'll start to process in the cloud. You can now open the job viewer using the magnifying glass button in the bottom right hand corner of the timeline panel. The job viewer will show you the progress of your job unit and the individual work units. As these are completed, they will be downloaded back into HoloEdit. The green bar under a frame indicates that the data has been completed and successfully downloaded back into HoloEdit. You can now select that stage and scrub the seek bar to that frame to inspect the results. Once the processing for all of the stages has completed, if the results from the first 25 frames of your data look good, you can go ahead and select the rest of your data and execute it. Once your clip is finished processing, let's review the data. One way of doing this is to click a stage and control click a stage you want to compare that to. Then click the compare button at the top left hand corner of the viewport to start the compare mode. This lets you see a split view showing the compressed mesh segments data on the left and your source data on the right. Using the compare mode drop down menu, you can also view this side by side 
or using a heat map showing the error and distance from the keyframe mesh. Using this heat view, it's easy to scrub through your data and find areas of error. Then, switching back to split view, you can take a closer look and see if this error is noticeable. Sometimes even areas of high error may look fine, especially as the clip is played in real time. If you determine the error is unacceptable and want to reprocess this section, you'll want to cut this segment into a new interval and change the settings for that interval before setting the data to reprocess. Note, when cutting stabilized segments, you must cut along the dotted segment borders or you will need to reprocess both halves of a cut segment. You also need to cut intervals for any data below this stage as they will also require reprocessing. For basic compression needs, I would recommend reducing the segment max error by half and rerunning the segment. This is the simplest way to get stabilized segments with less error. Also note, segments with three or less frames will not be exported as a stabilized sequence and instead will be exported as single frames. This is because only stabilized segments of four or more frames are more compressed than storing the individual frames. In the very high action parts of a clip, it may be acceptable to have ranges of single frame segments. Depending on how compressed you need the clip to be, it may not be worth the compute time required to get those parts of the clip properly stabilized. The best practice here is to export your clip to check its size before committing to more compute time to try and compress it further. Now that we have a properly stabilized clip, we're ready to export. Click File, Export Composition to open the export window. Select a folder outside your workspace to save the OMS file to. Next, set your desired output frame range. By default, this is set to the full length of your clip. Click the plus button to add an export type. Make sure the export type is set to OMS and add the name for your file. You can leave the rest of the OMS settings as default and click Save. The OMS file will contain the mesh data, but will also need to export the texture data. Click to add another export type. Set the output sequence type to MP4 and enter the same file name as your OMS. Set the frame rate to add your input data. And depending on the resolution of your input textures, you may want to enter a custom resolution. In this case, our source data is using 2880 by 2880 textures. And this is too large for many use cases. So I will be lowering this to 1440 by 1440 which is a good middle of the road resolution that balances performance with visual fidelity. Click save and export to start the export process. This process can be monitored in the task view. When it's completed, an explorer window will open showing you your exported OMS file. This concludes the OMS creation workflow. You now have an OMS file and MP4 file that can be imported into Unity or Unreal for volumetric playback. If you're looking for more information on anything mentioned in this tutorial, please reference our docs or you can ask this directly in our support portal.